Welcome to another episode of V for Veganism. I am here with Gregston Van Puxton. He is a press officer at the ALF press office uh, for the Northeast region. Thank you so much for joining us and doing this. Thank we you really for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. So before we get into everything that you do, which I, I'm excited to talk about, um, let's talk about you and your sort of road to veganism, how you uh, discovered it, um, what made you make the change, when, all that, all that good stuff. Start from the beginning. Okay, well, um, <laughs> I would say maybe I've always been into, uh, you know, activism, politics, that sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. from an early age, getting involved in like punk rock music, I'm a musician, drummer, got to bands like The Clash and, you know, very political bands. And then from there, you know, playing in punk bands, we did like Rock Against Racism and other benefits. And then from that, networking to other groups. And uh, eventually, I ended up working with some environmental groups, um, the Green Party, um, Any Racist Action back in 2005. And then um, through that, I also discovered uh, vegetarianism, which I started about 2005, 2006. And then recently, within the two, last two and a half years, I went vegan. Okay. So how did you get involved with ALF? Well, I started working with a Earth First collective back in probably 2011. And from there, um, they're semi-associated. They did some work, do some support with the North American Animal Liberation Press Office, and they do a lot of prisoner support for animal liberation prisoners. So from there, I investigated more. Um, through that, I also met uh, Jerry Vlasic and Will Hazlitt, who are also press officers. Mm -hmm. And through working with them, eventually I was asked to be a press officer. Cool. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, if you've seen the movie Okja, they kind of give this little weird introduction to the Animal Liberation Front and ALF, kind of made ALF really kind of like light and funny, which I didn't really appreciate. But for people that don't know, what is ALF, what is the Animal Liberation Front, and what do you guys do? Animal Liberation Front is an underground um, resistance movement uh, for the animal rights movement. Uh, it's one of many different facets of the animal rights movement. Mm -hmm. um, they use illegal direct action, um, such as like liberating mink from a mink farm, um, vivisection labs. Um, they use economic sabotage as a form of uh, furthering animal liberation to kind of stop the ex exploitation and the killing of harmless animals, especially in industries, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the ALF, uh, it's not really a centered or structured organization. It's um, leaderless. There's no membership dues. Nobody can join the ALF. It's anonymous groups of people or individuals that feel they want to take action on their own anonymously and they can do pretty much anything under that you know as far as uh, ALF actions mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of it is anonymous yeah um, I would say maybe less than 1% of people that actually commit these actions um, ever get caught um, so that's why the movement is very secret yeah um, so what the press office does the North American Animal Liberation Press Office um, none of the press officers nor the press office are members of the ALF. Um, what we do is report. Um, we receive anonymous communiques from people that commit or do um, underground direct actions. They send it to us anonymously and we report on it. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of give a different side to the story yeah. where mainstream media usually will not. Right. So being that it is anonymous, I would say even more anonymous than like anonymous for the voice list, um, and, it's, and it's leaderless, how did it even get started? It basically started in the early to mid 70s in England. Um, it kind of just branched out all over the world. Um, small cells decided to take action, you know, like I said before, um, anonymously, and it just kind of became a movement, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah. Um, so when so there there is a an Instagram that I've seen and I'm like who is who's running this Instagram? But that it seems that that Instagram is uh, it, they get stuff from all over the world. Mm -hmm. the, at least the one that I follow. Mm -hmm. So is, is that something that you would uh, deal with? Um, well, I don't think that Instagram is the North American Animal Liberation Press Office. There's other press offices. Okay. Um, I believe there's one in Europe. 
and others. There's also the AnimalLiberationFront.com, who is uh, not run by us, but you know is associated. Okay. So yeah, they would receive usually encrypted anonymous communiques. You know, um, especially uh, websites like that or ours. We don't know who's sending them. We don't want to know who's sending them. Right. Uh, for fear, you know, of law enforcement. Yeah. Know. Yeah. So, but a lot of those groups, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. These uh, websites is, are constantly monitored by law enforcement, and that's yeah. that's why it's imperative, especially with the press office, that we are not members and we don't do these actions. Mm -hmm. You know, because law enforcement would not hesitate to, you know, arrest us and whatnot right. if we were involved with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Or knew who, you know, these people were that were sending these communiques or doing these actions. Yeah. So what types of what types of things are you getting in terms of like in, in the Northeast, what are people what are people doing? Right now in the Northeast it's pretty quiet. Um, okay. a lot of the actions or more overseas in Europe and such. There has been some uh, mink liberations in um, central Canada, um, some in Minnesota. I think mm -hmm. there was a a mink release I think it was in July of last year, where something like 38,000, maybe it was 48,000, I'm not sure, correct on the exact numbers, yeah. were released. Um, a communique was sent, I think, to Bite Back magazine, and then we cross posted it and whatnot. And uh, yeah, but most of the actions are in uh, Europe and stuff right now. So, so I, actually, that's a pretty good point that I've sort of noticed. What, you know, anytime I see something from ALF, I'm like, yeah, and then I notice that it's not from the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a reason for that? Yeah, a lot of it was um, in the early to mid 2000s, there was uh, Operation um, Green Scare, well, we call it Green Scare, wow. where there's a lot of FBI and law enforcement repression on the Earth Liberation Front mm -hmm. and also included the Animal Liberation Front where people were being arrested um, for actions in the late 90s and the 2000s. And then when they were arrested, they were also charged as terrorists under the Patriot Act and whatnot, mm -hmm. where they would put these people who were basically just committing you know, property damage or you know, something not under a banner would be considered you know, just criminal mischief or you know, something you know, or, or criminal trespass, where now because they were doing it under a banner or, or a name, um, there's the terrorist enhancement charge yeah. on top of it. So now they're labeled terrorists as somebody who's in ISIS or something. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. law enforcement compares it to that, which obviously it is not. Right, and I feel near, like you know. in in the U.S. we have more so than other countries we have this obsession with terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, so and and yeah, like putting that label on it mm -hmm. just you know makes it you know, just that much, maybe that goes back to our history and wanting to be isolated and all of that. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's the animals that suffer, of course. Of course, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's another point too, you know, um, groups like the Animal Liberation Front and the Earth Liberation Front and other uh, groups that take direct action are labeled as terrorists when really the animals and the earth are the ones that are being terrorized by this Absolutely. company. Yep. Millions and millions of animals are killed every year, you know, through the fur industry and through the meat industry and vivisection and just horribly killed and tortured. And that to me is the real terrorism, not the people who are trying to save life. You know, through the whole animal rights movement, every, every bit is important, you know, people protesting outside of, uh, you know, fur stores and people holding vigils to network and whatnot or you know filing lawsuits i think it's all very important so i think you yeah. know even just that little aspect is you know a lot of times more the psychological effect of knocking over a hunting stand you know hunters like would be how did they find my stand why are they doing this to me you right. know like the psychological effect is usually yeah, pretty yeah, effective yeah. too yeah like whatever people can do to try to help save animals, help stop torture, try to change people's minds not to participate. I think it's all great. Yeah. Um, I saw something recently that um, was talking about, and I, I don't think it was here in the States, I think it was in the UK. This woman had infiltrated a, a police officer or, or whatever their equivalent of the FBI had infiltrated um, the group and she had participated in a, in a mink um, 
release with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then she wound up like leaving law enforcement because she fell in love with an, <laughs> with an <laughs> activist or something. Mm -hmm. um, but is that sort of like the tactics that they used here in the States? Yep, um, I mean, I would say 9.5 times out of 10 when somebody is actually caught and arrested for doing an action, it's usually someone snitches on them. Yeah. Know, will rat them out, as you, know, you could say, to law enforcement for whatever reason. You know, yeah. there was um, an animal liberation prisoner, his brother turned him into law enforcement because he had credit card debt, you yeah. know, things like that. That's usually yeah. how these people are caught. That's why the movement is so effective because it's so uh, loose. There's no, again, no, you know, central command. There's no, you know, mm -hmm. the secrecy is, uh, you know, and people acting anonymously or in small groups, I think that's why it's very effective. Yeah. With law enforcement, a lot of times, um, you know, it's almost a form of entrapment. Uh, they'll send, you know, uh, under, undercover agents or they'll pay informants, you know, somebody who got caught with a small amount of marijuana. They'll say, hey, if you work for us, we'll drop the charges, we'll pay you, now go do this. A lot of times they'll create these um, situations like there was a with the Earth Liberation Front there was a woman I think her name was Anna who was working with the FBI and a lot of times what they do is they'll push people to do an action like hey guys let's do this or hey guys let's go do this yeah 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 usually if somebody's doing that chances are they're probably either an infiltration or you know yeah. but yes those are tactics I mean um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly Cointel Pro from the FBI that was used okay um, to disrupt activist groups in the 60s and 70s, you know, that sort of thing, where they pit people against each other, um, start rumors, create gossip, tension, that sort of thing. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, divide and conquer, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, and, you know, and you hit the nail on the head before saying that really they are the terrorists, but they're the ones with the money, so they're the ones who control, mm -hmm. you know, the laws and the outcomes yep. and, you know, um, it's really, uh, I, I don't understand a person that would fight against someone who's trying to free oppressed beings. I just, right. I, I can't wrap my mind around that. I'm, how do you sleep at night? You mm -hmm. know, what kind of, uh, are you even human, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> well, that's one of the things that kind of got me involved with animal rights and eventually, you know, working with the LF press office because that's exactly how I felt and still feel, you know, yeah. very much, very passionate. And again, just because something is a law doesn't mean it's right. Right. You know, I mean, exactly. hundreds of years ago, it was legal to own a human being as property. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, obviously it's wrong. And, you know, so just because it's a law, it's not right. But like you said, though, the government and the reason why these laws are made by the government and enforced is through these corporations through money and lobbying and whatnot. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for, for being me. here and talking with us. Thank you very um, much. I, I think I speak for a lot of activists when I say, you know, uh, rescuing animals is, is one of the things that, you know, we dream about. And for people to actually go out and do it is, um, you know, very admirable. And uh, to me, you know, people that at least operate under the flag of ALF are just completely badass and, and I appreciate them. We appreciate and them too. <laughs> yeah, um, so thank you so much. Um, you. How can we uh, find more information? Well, you can go um, to animalliberationpressoffice.org. Um, if you go to that website, uh, we'll have press releases, we'll have um, information on how to support political prisoners and animal liberation, earth liberation prisoners. We also have a a page that will expose snitches and whatnot. Okay. But usually all the information is right there. Okay. You no, know, at so least for North American. If you if you want more information about ALF, uh, what they do, um, you know, if you're interested in doing something your, yourself and want need some inspiration, uh, the Animal Liberation Press Office definitely go check that out. And thank you again for joining thank us, Braxton. Please subscribe below, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.